80% of the information I'm about to share with you comes from Gardening with Leon, a sweet old man trying to change the world for the better. I hope that by slapping the net shack skin on all this information, I can help his message proliferate. P.S. The other 20% of the information comes from mistakes that I've made. Poe Buddy's nerfing. The containers I use will always be plastic. Metal gets hot and wood is too porous unless you spend a fortune on hardcore plastic lining. Today I'm using a $3 Homer bucket from Home Depot and there cannot be any drainage holes in the bottom. To start, a reservoir must be made. Take a length of six inch corrugated perforated drain pipe and cut it to the length of your pot. Home Depot carries 10 foot lengths of four inch pipes in stores, but you'll probably have to order online for a six incher. The thicker the pipe, the more water your pot can hold. And trust me, six inches is the sweet spot. The link to buy some is down below and you can just ship it to your local store for free delivery. All you've gotta do is take some heavy duty landscape fabric and cover up both ends. If you're not concerned with using up too much landscape fabric, you can wrap it around the whole dang pipe. Secure it in place with paracord or duct tape, anything that will hold up in a wet environment. And this porous fabric will let water into the reservoir, but not soil. If your reservoir fills with soil, it won't have any room in it for water. Lay this inside, and now you've got to drill a drain pipe over here in line with the opening. The hole's location is important. It should be an inch below the height of the corrugated pipe. So since the pipe is here, I need to drill around here. Allow me a moment to explain what's going on. This pipe is six inches high and the hole's around five inches off the ground. That means that when it's full, this container will hold five inches of water, one inch of air, and then everything from here on up is just soil. That's a ton of water, plus enough air for the roots to breathe. You do not want to starve roots of oxygen. The last thing before filling this up is to stick a one and a half or two inch PVC pipe down into the bucket opposite of the end of the drain hole. You wanna cut this at an angle because if it's laying flat against the base of the pot, water is gonna have a hard time flowing out. This is actually done. You could just fill it up with soil and call it a day, but I actually like to add a layer of perlite before adding the soil. Perlite is an expanded volcanic glass, so wear a mask and don't breathe in the dust as you pour it. Spooky smoke. Don't breathe this. Ah. Just get it to a point where the pipe is just about covered. This is an optional step. You could simply fill the whole thing up with soil, but perlite is cheaper, better at wicking, and inorganic. Organic material goes anaerobic when it gets compacted, wet, and starred for air, and it's honestly the single worst smell I've ever experienced. Now that you've got six inches of cheap insurance against anaerobic activity, bring on the soil. Your choice in soil does matter, so this is where you wanna blow your budget. I like Fox Farm brand, I particularly love Ocean Forest, but whoever's working at your local hydroponic shop or specialty garden store can help you pick based on what you're trying to grow. Sow your seeds directly in here or just transplant some established seedlings like this little tomato clone. And once everything's in place, give this one deep initial watering from up top. You've just made your first sub-irrigated planter, or SIP. From now on, you can water your plants by sticking a hose into this pipe. That's why I went with a nice, wide PVC pipe and running it until the overflow hole starts leaking. That's how you know that you've hit max capacity. There is no possible way for you to overwater your container, even if it gets caught in a heavy downpour. One note on watering. This nice, expensive soil has enough nutrients in it to get your plants established. But once it matures, you'll need to feed some water-soluble fertilizers into the pipe as well. Congratulations on starting your sub-irrigated garden. Each bucket is big, productive, efficient, cheap, and easy. But gardening is still hard. There are hours of lessons that you could learn, but here are eight things that I think you need to know. Number one, cultivate a microclimate. I can't just throw one of these out on the sidewalk or else the plants would cook. Use shade structures and trees to your advantage. Two, research for your area. If you Google planting calendar plus your city or county, you'll probably find a really helpful guide. I follow this one from the University of Arizona. Three, research your specific plants. The differences between an Armenian cucumber and a lemon cucumber are insane. They're like totally different plants. Asking for general advice on an entire kingdom is like asking, I have a pet animal at home. How do I keep it from dying? Look for tips that keep your plants and your location into consideration. Four, 
Expect this not to go well. Keep your expectations in check and don't give up if everything dies on your first try, especially if you try growing difficult fruits instead of simple herbs. Five, keep these on level ground. The physics of a sip get thrown out of whack when these are standing at an angle. Six, if you're tight on space or you can't grow outdoors at all, hydroponics rock. Click and Grow makes sets for beginners and you can scale up with other more expensive brands like Tower Garden if you like how it goes. Seven, grow what you eat, but explore a little bit too. There's no point in growing exotic foods just to let them rot, but I didn't even eat much zucchini until last summer and the harvest made me a total zook head. This summer I'm trying out these freaky purple and green beans called dragon tongues. Eight, experiment with other sip designs. There are so many out there and you might be able to steal small design ideas like this little piece of foam in the feed tube that lets you know when your little sip is running low. Good luck and happy growing.